On this not so lovely day, me, Josh from the Pickle Jar and Ben from Benji's Hobbies set off to a not so lovely place called Grimsby to visit a lovely shop called Grim Dice. And we're here to do a 24 hour challenge. Ben from Benji's Hobbies has got the full Necron starter box which he's going to build and paint in a full 24 hour period. Josh, he's going to be doing a full 3D printed army from One Page Rules which is Beastmen themed. And me, I'm going to be building a Beastmen themed table using the new terrain releases from One Page Rules. So let's tell you about this week's sponsor and get cracking with the build. Now if you don't know about One Page Rules, you've obviously not been watching my videos. They've been a supporter of mine for well over a year now. And they've just added terrain to their range. Which is amazing, because I absolutely love their miniatures. And the fact that now they do terrain that matches the style of their models, it just makes everything easy. It's a one-stop shop. I can literally grab my models, my terrain, and get my juices flowing. This latest release is Beastman, and that's why I'm building a board that's Badlands-y theme. And the fact that they can do this for £8 a month is absolutely mental. And if you're not into the whole monthly thing, the rates on my mini factory are very affordable, so you can even check them out there too. Thanks for your continuing support. Now back to the video. So this Beastmen inspired board build is taking me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Because we're building it in a shop where I don't have my tools, I don't have my comforts and I need to make sure that I've remembered everything. And because I don't have any tools I need to keep it as simple as possible. But also I don't really want to detract from the quality of the tables that I build. So it is quite challenging. However, I did procrastinate for a long time before even starting this board. It must have been 6 hours before I even started cutting foam. And I think this was more to do with the anxiety of it. The lads, they were hitting on hard, as in Ben had almost finished building his box of models. Josh had been complaining about the size of uh, Dom's airbrush cup. But it was getting on rather well with all the models primed and prepped for painting. Me. I had to come up with a quick solution for edging the boards in because I didn't want crappy pieces of polystyrene on show. I couldn't use plywood and a jigsaw like I would at work because I'm in a shop, I can't be using power tools and getting dust all over product and making a mess. So my idea was to put a bit of foam board on the edges of the board. It's not strong but it's clean and it's tidy. And when I speak to a lot of people about building gaming tables, they're always bothered about power tools and edging strips and everything else. And I think this is a, a nice, simple medium. We're a tube of no more nails, just sticking stuff in place with a couple of cocktail sticks to hold it in place while you're working on it. And it gives you quite a nice, neat edge. It's not amazing, but if this is what's putting you off doing a board because of the power tools, this shows you don't don't need them. And the theme that I'm going for on this board is like a Badland theme, deserty type layout. So what would that be without a big sort of Ayers Rock in the middle of the gaming table? And all I'm doing is I'm creating the landform using the foam with a retractable knife and I'm getting a rough shape. This doesn't have to be neat at all, but the flatter that you keep the foam when working with a retractable knife, the less modelling compound you'll have to use later, which keeps it lighter and cheaper, so it's always better doing that. And since switching to using bark for imitation rock, the weight of my boards has been considerably less. And if you're interested in buying bark that's ready to use, the right size and pieces that are perfect for doing this job, we have them all below at Geek Gaming Scenics. And now I lay these down is like a drywall. I just sort of glue the first levels of them down using the no more nails. And then once that starts to go off and they're, they're holding themselves quite well, I then build it up with super glue and try and make the rock formation make some sense. 
This is a bit of trial and error and trying to get bits that fit in well, but you don't have to do it 100% perfect because we can fill and sculpt and make this rock face all carry on later with the modeling compound. The only bit that was quite complicated was doing this piece like the Ayers rock part because you've actually got to make all the pieces go round and form like quite a natural shape. It was quite fun, it's quite therapeutic trying to make this all work and if there's a piece that's too big you can cut it in half or you can trim away more foam and sit it in place. Using super glue and activator to build these up it's, it's perfect, there's no waiting times, you just get it stuck on there and build it up. Now to make all your ground formations have a very naturalistic shape we use modelling compound which can be purchased from Geek Gaming Scenics below or you can buy it from Grindice which also supports me. All the links are below. Now work in very small areas. I worked on one formation at a time because this goes off in about 15-20 minutes and you can use this for building up the landforms and even blending all your rocks in. So if you've got any deep gaps or any sort of areas where the, the, they just literally look like loads of little pieces of bark stuck together just smush some of this into them gaps and smooth it out build it out even don't be afraid to cover too much of this up because you can always remove it before it dries anyway and then once you've got all that in place give it 10-15 minutes to start firming up and you can shape it a little bit with the tongue depressor to give it that rock shape and then once that starts to firm up and harden up, you can go in there with like a toothpick or some decent sculpting tools if you've got some and start carving out the shapes of the striations in the rock and just digging out, cutting out areas which make it look more natural and it gets rid of the loads of little pieces of back stuck together look and it just makes it all look continual. While that's drying up, I'm now looking to think where shall I place my Beastmen themed 3D printed parts that I got from the one page rules release. So I just plan and have a look and try and think from a gaming perspective, where would it best to be? And I settled with a rib cage on one side and a rock as if it was like a ceremonial place. And the elephant skull or mammoth skull. I sort of put that in a place and buried it under some compound so it looked like it's been there a very long time and the sand's blowing up around it. Then I just chuck a very lovely yellowy brown colour down on the table. The colour doesn't matter, it's only there to act as a base coat to the foam and it's the darker colour of the sand. So don't worry if you haven't got a perfect sand colour, just any sort of ochre yellow will do. And give that a good thick coat all over the board. And while that yellow's still wet on the rocks, I go on there with like a quite a soft brown. And with that yellow being like an ochre yellow, it brings that brown down to quite an earthy yellowy brown colour, which is really nice when you're doing this sort of badlandsy type board because you don't want like the rocks to be a completely different colour, but they still want to have some sort of earthy browny grey look to them. And that's why I'm doing that. And you just sort of blend it in with the wet colour beneath. And then it's the easy fun stage, you paint it all over with a good thick coat of PVA glue all over the board. And then we go in there with desert sand and stone and we sprinkle that all around the base of the rocks and on large flat areas just to simulate some coarser areas of ground form. And then all the flat areas we put tropical beach base ready all over that and then you get a very nice natural looking badlandsy desert type table that you've not had to paint it at all. Scattering a bit more desert sand and stone base ready in areas for some coarse areas where you can put some foliage and things goes a very long way so if you, if you want that you can add that afterwards. Now for dry brushing the rocks I'm using just a neutral grey and a bit of cream. Using a large makeup brush just to blend them together and get them off on a bit of cardboard. I painted all the rocks, the tree and even all the terrain pieces on this board exactly the same way. I just tied it all in, I just focused a bit more on the greys on the tree and on the bone and the stones I focused with a bit more cream. And it came up rather nice to say I've not done much. And this is where the pressure 
really did start because I've got to get a layer of spray glue down. I did cheat a little bit and I coated in alcohol first and then I sprayed it with matte scenic sealant all over it to lock it in place. And I was hoping the alcohol would help it skin over a little bit quicker. I had about five hours till I had to get this finished, but you still need to get a good solid layer of glue down to stop the sand from moving and give the tough something to stick to. And after about four and a half hours, that top layer of glue had become dry to the touch and it was rather firm. So I got them tufts stuck down. However, <laughs> sticking the tufts down did take me over the 24 hour limit because uh, it took me a good two, two and a half hours of just sticking tufts down. Crazy amount of tufts, I know, but thank God it's not all over the board and only in patches. But this needed doing, it had so much more, and if I did have some more time, I'd have put some foliage in between all the grasses, just to show dying, arid sort of foliage around the grasses, which would have made it a little bit nicer. But to say all I've done is throw some desert sand and stone and some tropical beach space ready down, and then where them coarser par parts are, I've put some autumn tufts. It just makes it all come together and look really nice, as in I'm really happy with this board, and if I'd have started on time, I'd have probably got a lot more done. So it just shows in a, sm a small amount of time, you can do something like this in just one go. And then after the clock had finished, I painted the edge black with just some black acrylic, and it just ties all the board together and it finishes it off quite nicely. And to say that I did this all in one sitting with no real pauses, I just worked through, it means that something like this is achievable in a weekend. And this is the whole point of the Geek Gaming Scenic range, is to make building boards achievable. The fact that I've not had to paint anything, the fact that he's just literally creating landforms and then throw in base reddies and a few tufts around and you've got yourself a good looking gaming table. And now that I'm using bark as well, I don't even have to forward plan, I can just grab the bark off the shelf and use it. So if I get that itch to just build a random gaming table at any point, I don't have to think, oh I've got to cast up a load of rocks. So for me, I absolutely love this new process of building gaming tables. What do you think? Well, it's done. I'm happy with it. Are you happy with it? Oh, yeah. Spot on. I'd like to thank Grim Dice for having us. It's been absolutely great. If you, if you want to be in for winning the board, all the links to Grim Dice, we're sorting that out. Uh, you can look below, and you've got to be in the UK, and you've got to come and pick it up if you want it, all right? But chance to win it. It's a great cause, and it's for Models for Heroes. Also, guys, if you want to support the channel, you want to support these guys, there's an affiliate link below. Whatever you want to buy, whether it's your Wars of Stars with Green Little Men, whether it's your old people stuff, Ben's favourite game, and uh, Warhammer, Geek Gamer Scenics, wherever you need, it's here. And if you buy it from them, I get a little bit of cut back. And we all win. So, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you again for the next video. Love, love, love.